Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's back to school season, and if you're taking a US history course, or if you've already taken one, you're probably familiar with the name King George, the last American king. King George is history, as they say, canceled by the original 13 colonies by a document called the Declaration of Independence. But did you know that King George is still making headlines today? That's right, in our year 2020, no less, King George is making news. Let's take a look at that headline as a springboard to talk about the past. It's time for another episode of the History Behind the Headline. As King, George's, King George III's secret terror after losing the U.S. War of Independence. And this ran in the Daily Express, which is a British tabloid. If you want to read the article, you can uh, visit the website and uh, read it yourself. I'm not even going to summarize it for you if you really want to know the secret terror of uh, King George III, which is uh, clickbait if I ever saw it. But here's the key paragraph. Historians have not agreed upon the sadness George felt following his loss in the battle for independence with the colonies. And as I said, you can go to that website and read the details. But what I find actually more interesting about this period and what nobody seems to ask when you're in school is, is this. What did King George think about the Declaration of Independence? I mean, when he first received it, he heard the news about it and then he read it himself. What went through his mind? Now these words uh, are now mostly revered by us in this country and even in other parts of the world when you study the influence of Declaration of, Pen of Independence on a global scale. But did King George uh, say these were impressive words? Did he think it was eloquent? Did he say, Boy, these colonists sure have a good grasp of the English language. I mean, what did he think about it? Now, here's King George in a very famous portrait where he has his hand on his hip and the elbow sticking out. And that wasn't by accident, by the way. The el elbow sticking out like that, that was a, uh, a famous pose which communicated uh, boldness and uh, being in control. So if he were to uh, take a selfie for Instagram, you would be sure that that elbow would be sticking out just like it is there. And in a sense, he was uh, bold and in control or tried to be with the 13 colonies. You say, after all, why would you ask what he thought about the Declaration of Independence? Isn't it clear that we know what he thought? He sent his troops to squash the rebellion. And in fact, yes, ultimately the Declaration of Independence was unpersuasive. But what I'm asking is, what did he think when he read the part of the declaration that was attack after attack, complaint after complaint about him and him alone. Now we all know the introductory part of the Declaration of Independence, but few of us know what comes after that, the actual charges against the king. We know that King George didn't assemble all the leaders of the American uh, Congress to the table and say, I know you're upset, fellas. We know he didn't even visit uh, the American colonies in person and try to negotiate a new deal. As far as the parliament was concerned, Lord Adam Gordon was one of the few from parliament to ever visit America. And yet uh, the fact is that King George was in terms of power, a weak king because he wasn't an absolute monarch. He had to share his power with parliament. So of course the king was going to be too kingly to respond to his mere subjects. But what you didn't learn in school was that the British government did have an official response to the Declaration of Independence. And that response would come from an English lawyer named John Lynn. Now we know about this other John, John Hancock, his very famous signature, John Hancock, the president of the Continental Congress. But if you wanna know, what the British had to say about this declaration, you would have to turn to John Lynn. 
And that's exactly what we're going to do in the next episode in this series. We're going to take a deep dive into the answer to the Declaration of the American Congress written by John Lynn. And then you can decide for yourself whether the colonies were just being extra when they were talking about revolution. In the meantime, pick up a copy of the Declaration and read it. That's all I have for now. So thank you for watching. And if you'd like to know more, be sure to read the notes that I left in the description with some links for additional information. Also feel free to comment. I do want to know what you think, any thoughts that you might have. I'm looking forward to learning from you as well. And if you have some questions, go ahead and leave it there. And also uh, I'll have a new video soon. In the meantime, if you want to make your life more pleasurable, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And remember, the past is never dead. It isn't even past.